Have you ever considered something alternative to uh, air inflated tires? Have you seen some yeah. of these these alternatives that have uh, essentially spaces in between the yeah. upper wall and the wheel? Have you thought about that? Yeah, we've we've had uh, we haven't found a you know uh, a tire that because uh, you, you got to wor- worry about road noise. Uh, you got to take out uh, potholes and bumps. Um, you you, you got to have like um, good grip, but you also want to have low rolling resistance so that you know you get good range. Those are a lot of things to try to put into one tire. Um, then if you also say and it can't have air, it's like this is hard. Um, so but you're talking. I'm talking to a guy who's putting people on Mars. You can't figure out an yeah. airless tire. It's just it's it's an incremental constraint. Mm. Um, so I'm not saying there won't be such a thing. I think there will be, to be precise. Because it seems like we've just gotten way too comfortable with this idea that tires blow out and you get flats. It's very annoying. Flats are annoying. Yeah, very yeah. annoying. Yeah. Um, in non-sport tires, by the way, are much less likely to go to have flats. Cause they just, sure, they have more know, bounce. They yeah. Go, yeah, like you, let's say yeah. you, hit, you hit the edge of a pothole. Mm-hmm. You, if you've got more rubber wall, you know, you've got a longer way to go before yeah. you, you pinch the tire. So, um, sport tires tend to have more flats, um, and, and especially in, in LA potholes, that's the worst. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like enough- there, there was one particular pothole on Sunset Boulevard, <laughs> it would just take out so many Model S, like a boom, boom, both sides of the car. <laughs> really? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> um, yeah, Steven Spielberg was actually once, it's like, hey, St- St- Steven Spielberg is like, <laughs> Two tires went. I was like, "God damn it! I know that pothole." <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like you can pay to fix that. I mean, fix that pothole. It seems like that, that's actually. <laughs> it would be like, man, there sure are a lot of taxes in California for roads this bad. Yeah, well, it's, the place is a mess. Yeah. Um. So, so ultimately, one day that's a possibility of having some sort of an airless tire because I've seen yes. prototypes. I've never seen one on an actual car in physical. In, in real life. Yeah, I think we're the technology is gradually getting there. Um, and I think for something like a robo taxi where you want to have the tires last for a long time and not go flat, um, it's going to make a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, but other than that, essentially most of what we saw in the demo is the same. It's still going to have. Now, oh, yeah. There was the, the issue with the glass when you know, <laughs> the accidentally shattered. That, how, how annoying was that? That was shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we we literally spent, you know, hours beforehand with like lots of people throwing uh, steel balls at the, at the window. Right. Um, I mean, we must have thrown at least at least a dozen people must have thrown steel balls at, at the, the window. same window though. Yeah, same damn window. Isn't that the problem? Yeah, that might. It turns out that might be the problem. <laughs> <laughs> if you keep throwing steel balls, eventually it's gonna break. <laughs> <laughs> and and I did I did ask Franz to really wind up and give it all, Ooh. you know. And I should have, should, have, should have like, oh, take it easy, yeah. you know. Give me a you don't fake need to wind up. Yeah, we don't need the fastball. Yeah, so, but I asked for, I did ask for the fastball, and we're like, okay, let's go for the slightly not slightly slower ball. Do you think it was because you guys were hitting the sidewall with a sledgehammer? Yeah, yeah, first? That, that could be. Like we're trying to figure out how the hell this thing break because, I mean, we were just bouncing steel balls off it all day. Right. Um, and we think possibly what it, what what might have happened there was that uh, hitting it with a sledgehammer might have cracked the base of it, and mm. once you crack the base of it, it loses all its strength. Right. Um, and then it, and then it was just have a hairline fracture, and then then you then you hit it, you hit it anywhere, it's going to shatter. Did you recreate that? We we didn't. Um, it, it's it's also hard with uh, test glass, like with uh, you know the, like when you actually do production glass, it's much more robust than. Uh, demo glass because uh, production glass you you you, you know you, um you it, like demo glass you just can't ma- you you have to have like massive tools and ovens and everything to to make the production glass it's it's like and if you don't we, you know that takes a while to do so the production glass is always better than than the than, than demo glass mm. um nonetheless it should have worked um and, yeah, and it was probably because we whacked it with a sledgehammer and then threw the steel bullet at it. Mm. 
but but uh, it it will be bulletproof to a handgun. Now, why did you decide like, to do all that? Make it bulletproof and make it like you could hit it with a sledgehammer. Like, what what was the motivation to make it different than just like a Model S? I mean, I think you know, it's like what's cool about a truck? Trucks are tough, and like, okay, what's right. tougher than a truck? A tank. What about a tank from the future? <laughs> okay, now you have a tank from the future. Okay. Yeah, that's bulletproof. Yeah, and. How's that compared to, you know, it's way tougher than a regular truck. Look, it's fucking cool. Yeah. There's no doubt. That's an I mean, having something character from the future. That shit's yeah. being like a halo with a rocket launcher in the back. Have you thought about doing something like that? Somebody's going to do it for, for sure. For military use? Yeah. Seems like it. I mean, I don't know. I, that sounds like it'd be fun. I mean, you should, 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 like, you know, cruising around the field and, like, lobbing, shooting rockets. Now, is there ever a possibility that these things are going to be solar powered? Is that is that someday is the solar technology going to get to well, a point where it's kind of a surface area issue so i mean i think we could possibly put the the, the, the cover of the truck bed um you know put some solar cells in that so if you just leave it out in the sun you know probably bring you know recharges a few miles a day type of thing oh it was only it would only be a few miles yeah. but what about one day is it possible the technology could evolve to the point where they could extract no. more no really no, it's a, so there's about one kilowatt per square meter of solar energy, and then you're going to get uh, I don't know, probably 20, 25% efficiency, so you get 200 watts per square meter. And then that's assuming that you're normal to the sun. So, you know, like you're, you know, at the right angles, basically, like are you facing the sun or not? So, you know, when you add all those things up, you say how many square meters can you really get? And then uh, how many watt hours per mile? So... It has basically, you know, if you could do 10 miles a day, you'd be lucky. Oh, really? Yeah. And that's not going to change? No. 